Well, I mean, I, I did do a lot of the, you know, the documentation updates for it. Like one of the first things I did working on open source. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, well, welcome everybody. Uh, today I'm going to do a quick run through of everything in CanUtil. I'm going to try to make this go as fast and painless as possible. So let's get started. And it's really just going to be running through the uh, documentation, which I've been working on updating, um, kind of giving a quick glossing over of what each part does. Um, so and I'm only going to really touch upon what I think are the important parts of CanUtil. So if you don't know what CanUtil is, you can find CanUtil under infrastructure, and you click on CanUtil. And it's a collection of a bunch of different modules, JavaScript-related modules, and uh, DOM-related modules. Now, one thing that we're probably going to do over time with, within CanJS 3.0 is move some of these things out into their own packages. We've already done that on some things that were in CanUtil, like CanCID. Uh, I would expect to start seeing some of these in the infrastructure collection over time um, and not documented here. But that's, uh, you know, um, we won't be breaking compatibility because CanUtil will just be importing the um, packages that it needs and just encouraging people to use the packages directly instead of the modules in CanUtil. But without any further ado, um, let's just get into a discussion of all the different modules. One thing you should note is how this works here is the module, if you see can util uh, dot slash assign slash, that means the module name is actually can util js assign assign. Now, if you're using steel to load everything, you can just uh, write the ending slash and it knows how to find it. There, um, if you're using Webpack or uh, Browserify, you got to write the full path out. But uh, one, one other final thing, all of these utils are good and great to use, especially if you're trying to do your own kind of extensions or open source work. Um, we hope these things will be useful to those people. So uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, assign, right? That just assigns, it's, it's just like low dashes assign, assigns the object properties here to the object uh, as the first argument and returns whatever the first argument is with all of these properties just copied over. Um, we're going to see later um, defaults and defaults, which I'll just scroll to. Defaults works pretty much the same way. It's a, except that it's not going to actually assign um, if the property is already assigned, it won't overwrite it. So it's kind of like providing defaults in case it's not assigned. So that's what the uh, canutil.js defaults does. Let me make this a little bit bigger. We're just going to kind of go one by one here. Um, base URL, this is just, this is used to kind of know what, um, what path you should join from when uh, any, anything wants to request relative to the current page the user is working on, um, it can use this base URL um, module and call to get that path. Uh, can, J, um, can Stash has a join base helper that uses the base URL. And base URL is settable, so if you wanted to say, actually, the real base URL, what I want configured, has nothing to do with the path, you know, where my page is found, but maybe I wanted it set to my server, you can control base URL by setting it to whatever you want. Hey, Justin, question. So mm -hmm. since you can set base URL, that doesn't happen to be like a compute or something under the hood that's observable, is it? No, it's not. OK, just curious. Um, wouldn't be a bad to have a compu base URL, uh, a computed base URL, but no. Everything in, in CanUtil is is really got to be designed to not work with the rest of CanJS because it's really got to be like the lowest level layer. Um, so it's all it's all pretty pretty functional and you know and, and basic utilities. <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. Thought I'd ask though. Um, CID map. This is a map uh, like a an ES six map like polyfill. 
Um, but what it does do is if map doesn't exist, it will decorate any objects here with a CID property so that it can have order one insert and removal. So it, we're basically adding extended properties to anything here. CanJS uses this a, a, a ton to you know, know what objects it has and what it doesn't. Um, but this, this is pretty useful uh, if you are wanting to support browsers without map and still have good performance. Similarly, there's uh, can you till CID set, and this will do the same decoration, but acts just like the ES6 set um, type. Deep assign works just like assign, but will recurse through objects and you know set deep project uh, deep deep uh, properties. So here I'm assigning um, this object with a nested property here. This is actually going to make a copy of this object here and add that to res, where the other one would just have this, this object property on this object, which is res, would still just point to um, this same object. But instead, it's going to make a copy of everything in here. You can think of it that way. Defaults we talked about. Um, deep RAM, this is a really good one. Actually, I think because people don't understand that this kind of thing is even possible. Uh, a lot of service layers, this is how they support query strings. Like if you wanted to pass an array um, uh, to the server, deep param, there's also a param that does the reverse of this, which would take an object like this. But this deparameterizes query string into the object representation. And there's a param that give, takes this and gives you back this. Um, Dev, this is um, a basically utilities for development only uh, logging. Basically, dev won't do anything in, uh, won't do any logging in development mode. It's kind of zeroed out. Um, this is a good, this is kind of a standard pattern within CanJS on how to log warnings but have it so that the logging code is removed in a production steel build. So by wrapping it with steel remove start and steel remove end, and you call this dev something happen module, um, you're still going to be importing the dev module in production, but it's basically empty. Um, so this is a good way of like kind of having dev logging, but it kind of vanishes, all the code for it vanishes in production. Uh, we have a diff module. This can be useful for a whole lot of different things. Um, we, have a, we actually have a diff object and a, and a diff, but um, both of them work kind of the same way. One diffs, diff diffs arrays, and you give it a, a, a um, this kind of beginning array and what it's being transformed into. And it will give you an array of patches that need to be made. So it's basically saying at the first index, we don't delete anything, but we insert these items. We're inserting a two. And it will give just an array of patches back. Um, each does what you expect, loops through stuff. Uh, get, this is very much like Lodash's get. Uh, you give it a object, and it will read these properties. Or uh, if the property values don't exist, it'll just return undefined. Um, a lot of these other things were just really obvious things that I didn't feel like writing out, at least for this. Um, we have a bunch of like shape detection type things, like is it a promise? Is it a promise like? Is it a plain object? Is it node? Is it an empty object? Uh, that can be used for a whole lot of different scenarios to tell you know what what type of data structure you're looking at. Join URIs. This is really handy if you have to join two URLs, like I have my current page or something. My, you know, I, I have my um, base URL, and but I have a path that's relative, and I want to get the full path. Join URIs provides that. Um, 
there's param and stuff like that we talked about the the other kind of cool one i think that was recently added is this string to any and it basically takes a string value and it converts it to what it, it thinks is the primitive type so if it sees not a number or something that looks like a number, it'll convert it to the corresponding value. If it can't figure out what to convert it to, it'll just leave it as a string. So this is useful in scenarios where like, you know, especially in, uh, when you're serializing um, uh, a URL and you might see false in a URL, well, that's still as a string. You might want to convert that to, you know, the, the actual Boolean false this utility can be useful in those scenarios. Okay, so those are the kind of some of the critical JavaScript, you know, just, just only based on JavaScript um, utilities. And then there's a bunch of um, DOM-based utilities. Uh, can you tell Ajax is a jQuery-like um, Ajax utility, right? You could pass it a URL and the data you want to send. You can also pass it a method and it gives you a promise back that resolves when the X internal XHR object um, is successful. Or if the internal XHR object is rejected, uh, gives, gives a bad status code back, this promise would be rejected. Um, Atter, this is should be this this really should be used if um, there's kind of two, if you're mutating the DOM, um, you should always do it through, if you're changing an attribute, through this atter module or through this mutate module, which we'll discuss in a minute. It's really important because CanJS supports browsers that don't support mutation observers, like IE9. Uh, we have kind of our own way of triggering, letting, uh, letting things know that a mutation happened. Um, atter and this mutate are the ways of doing that. If you don't care about those browsers, then don't worry about it. You can set attributes to your heart's content and change the DOM however you want. But these are um, kind of important utilities if you want to maintain, change the DOM while maintaining um, kind of CanJS uh, mutation observer support or its ability to fire off inserted, removed, and attributes events. Um, Atter actually has a little bit more to it that's, that's important too, is that Atter has um, these custom attributes, these special attributes that allow you like focused and values. Um, focused, for instance, lets you set or get whether an, at, an element is focused. This is a really, I think a good, I think I need to do a whole talk on special attributes at some point because a lot of stuff that, you know, if CanJS's views aren't working, a lot of times you might be able to create a custom attribute. Um, people already do this a lot of times through CanViewAtter, but these kind of special attributes even give you a little bit more power to do things. Um, and DomAtter allows you, if you're going through DomAtter, allows you to read these custom properties on the DOM and set them to something. And they, they work through CanJS's view bindings just, just perfectly. Um, so it basically allows you to get and set attribute values, but it might set, it, no, it also has property awareness. So sometimes you'll be set, getting a set of properties or getting set attributes or these virtual properties like focused and values. Values is there for, um, for multi-select um, elements, right? Multi-select elements where you can select multiple elements, then there's a values property that you can kind of two-way bind to arrays. So that's Atter. There's a few other things that are kind of like standard jQuery-ish helpers, like DOM data, um, you know, child nodes, change the class name, that kind of stuff. Um, <sighs> events is a really important one. This allows you to listen to um, events on the DOM, right? Basically, it just really does add event listener, but it also allows you to listen to CanJS's custom events, uh, which CanJS has a few different custom events. It has attributes events, inserted custom events, and delegate, uh, or sorry, 
inserted, removed, and attributes custom events. This, you can pass inserted, removed, and allows you to listen to them. It also has a dispatch method that allows you to dispatch a custom event with arguments and whether it bubbles or not. So this, this object basically you know, gives you DOM event binding and triggering functionality. Frag is a nice utility that essentially converts something into a document fragment. Um, so here I, I've created a, a paragraph element. I've set its inner HTML to something. But, um, and then I have this other kind of string, h1, and I want to kind of combine those two things into a single document fragment. I can pass this array, and out will come a document fragment with an h1 as a child and a paragraph as a child. It, it's got a lot of different ways you can eventually create a document fragment, like an API that supports a lot of different ways of passing things to it. And then finally, there's mutate. This is where, this is how you should mutate um, DOM nodes if you're working inside of CanJS. So like CanStash or CanControl or pretty much anything that mutates the DOM in CanJS, it uses these DOM mutate methods. The methods are all the same as normal DOM mutation methods. Uh, so you just, you use this DOM mutate a pen child instead of normally calling a pen child. And this makes sure that CanJS can simulate the mutation observers and custom elements, uh, custom events that it supports. So that's it. That's a, a high level. Um, there's a lot of other things that this does, but I think those are the most important ones. Uh, this is, I think, a really good, this, um, or CanUtil, and some of the other, like can event. Um, I think some of those are really useful low-level utilities that could be used in kind of any, any project. And our goal for our infrastructure tools is to make them more and more useful to any project. There's a lot of different, um, you know, there's, there's jQuery and there's, um, there's Lodash, and obviously they provide um, similar sets of functionality. But I think where our stuff will be different is that, well, mostly is how we build everything in individual packages, and we're going to release them all. So you can, you can, I think, a little bit more easily get just what you want, and it's all developed independently. When, when these things will eventually be in their own packages and, or repositories. So that's it. Any, uh, any other thoughts? All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming. Hopefully, you learned something. Look, uh, look for me to do more of these. I'm probably going to do one on can event next. Just talk through how that works and what that provides. And I'm just going to kind of start from the bottom and then get to the top. Cool. So, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Justin.